we talked about a whole bunch of stuff. So when people first started coming to the United States, coming to, there was a lot of Native people that are here in the Bay Area. The Bay Area has some of the largest populations, second only to Arizona, largest populations of Native people right here in the Bay Area, right? In Alameda County, there's 9,650 Native Americans, just in Alameda County. There's a lot of Native people here, but people, we are still invisible to everybody. Right? Because we don't get that, info. we don't get to be on the radio. We don't get to be on TV like everybody else does. Our issues aren't as important. We, they still want us to be invisible. During the 50s, 60s, and 70s, people were bused in here, trained in here, all over the place from something called the Relocation Act. It was another form of genocide. The United States government said, well, if boarding schools isn't going to beat the shit out of them and get this stuff out of there, if the missions didn't do it, if all this other stuff didn't happen, we're going to relocate them to the cities. We're going to give them jobs. We're going to give them education. We're going to wipe out the Indians in a different kind of way. And then we can go on their land and we can get those minerals that we want. We can get that land that we want to use and stuff like that. So Native people came here to the Bay Area. And they went to L.A., and they went to Detroit, and they went to a couple other places. But the Bay Area was one of the biggest places that folks came. And when they got here, those folks didn't know that Indians already existed here. And there was all kinds of stuff that happened. They weren't given the jobs that they were, they were told they were going to get. They weren't given the education they were told they were going to get. These were poor Indian kids that came off the reservation looking for hope. And they ended up at the Y in downtown crying and screaming and not having a place to be and not having a, having a, a community anymore and not being able to see other folks. And so because of that, there was a lot of organizations that were set up in the cities. So we had the, we had the uh, Friendship House Associate, uh, America, uh, Friendship House in Oakland, California, which is one of the oldest urban uh, Indian centers in the whole country. And out of that, movement started. We had the AIM movement start. And people started saying, we need stuff for our families. And they set up a clinic. And they set up a job training program. And they set up all of these other things. So there are places in the community that Native people can still go and get services. But that's social work. That's not organizing, right? And so right around 1990, um, 1999, there was a group of people that came together. And they said, you know what? You know, they're closing up the bases in, the, in um, the Bay Area. So they are closing the, uh, the Oakland Army Base, they were closing the Naval Station in Alameda, and according to one of the treaties, it says that government property that is no more used by the government goes back to the Native people from that land. Well, we're not recognized as Native people, but folks in the community said, you know what, we're gonna work with some people and you're gonna give us a part of that land. And so they did. They opened a residential treatment uh, facility out there in Alameda. They, and I worked as a case manager for women and children um, that were coming out of domestic violence situations or were in early recovery. Um, and I did that kind of work. But also during that time, I be, we uh, started this other thing called Indian People Organizing for Change. And this was a, a piece of work that was started because Native people didn't really care about putting a job training program at the Oakland Army base, but was more worried about not having a voice in their own community. And so we began to talk about what were those issues. And they wanted to talk to their city council people. They wanted to talk about being homeless on the streets of Oakland and being invisible. They wanted to talk about having schools and education. And they wanted to talk about those things. And so we created a place for them to do that. But we also began to get phone calls about hundreds of bodies being pulled out of a place in Emeryville. And that Shell Mound and Ohlone Way, there was a place there that was thousands of years old that was my ancestor's burial site. It was a cemetery. It was on an 1857 Coast Survey map. So people coming into the, into the Bay Area could use that as a point of reference when they came in here. That's how huge it was. It was 60 feet high and 350 feet in diameter. And today we have a horrible little metal, metal basket there. And we have nothing that talks about the people that were originally here, my ancestors. So the work that I do now is around protecting those sacred sites. I say that not one more of my ancestors needs to be pulled out of, this, out of the ground. Now, one more piece of development needs to happen in order for that stuff to go on. That there are other cultures in this world that believe that their ancestors mean something, and they build around them and they figure out how to do that. But the country that we live in today 
don't honor the people that were first here. They don't honor those things. And they give us laws that don't have any teeth to it, that doesn't allow us to have a say in what we do. And so we need to change those laws. And so we created this walk to bring around education and, and uh, to people that didn't know about who Ohlone people were. And we got people from all over the world, from the Cape Verde Islands, from Japan, from Nova Scotia, from Australia, and they walked with me for, for, for days and days. And we walked from Vallejo down to San Jose and up the other side, 280 miles, and it took us three weeks to do that. And it was people from all over the world, all walks of life. It wasn't just Ohlone people, it just wasn't Indian people, but everybody that made it possible that my ancestors can now have a voice. My ancestors can tell us a story that we don't have to live like that as a community anymore. And so when I do organizing, it's with all of that stuff in mind. That everybody, it takes everybody, because this is all of our community, but not one of those things needs to be disturbed again. We don't go into other people's places and disturb their sites. And we shouldn't do that to my ancestors either. And I give thanks and praise to those people that came before me that were able to hide out and pretend they were somebody else so that I can stand before you today. So.